This video is made for adult collectors because knife hands or something. Okay, a movie Bumblebee and a movie Sentinel Prime. Stand up. Stand up. Stay. So I have Prime and Alpha Trion, and I like both of them, but these two, oh boy, these two are actually so much better, good lord. And like, I didn't end up keeping almost any of the mainline Rise of the Beast figures due to them releasing alongside their Studio Series versions, and the movie's delay made that so. But this time the Studio Series toys don't come out, well, almost all of them anyways, don't come out till after this toy line's shelf life has ended. So I feel more inclined to keep these. And with that, these feel like they're made to stay on your shelf longer than the Rise of the Beast figures did. If that makes any sense, it probably doesn't. Anyways, this is Bumblebee and Sentinel Prime from the new film Transformers 1. And bruh, these two toys knock Prime and Tryon and pretty much all of the Rise of the Beast mainline stuff out of the water for me personally. And I liked a lot of Rise of the Beast mainline. Also, side note, I bought Filch the same day and to me, she's the best use of this mold and you should totally get one. But back to these two idiots, why do I like them so much? Well, I feel... I feel, not I feel, they feel cohesive. I don't feel cohesive. The, ro <laughs> the Rise of the Beast mainline figures had some pretty dull colors and the beasts felt different from the Autobots who felt different from the one Terracon they put out. These all not only feel like they belong together but are also super vibrant and colorful. They stand out on a shelf and yet they still fit sort of in my non-Studio Series movie toy shelf and they're built pretty well. That's also where they're going to stay once this video is done. Like. On both of these, I have no issues build quality wise. And they come packed with some neat accessories like Sentinel comes with four guns and Bumblebee comes with one blade and his gun and a removable chest to show the T-Cog. Kinda wish it came with a battle mask, but eh. Both of these guys are about deluxe-ish height, like small to medium deluxe height. And build though, they, they feel a bit less dense and complex than your average deluxe, cause these are cheaper, like seven to nine bucks cheaper here, depending on where you find them. I really like how Sentinel looks and I was fully expecting him to be my favorite, but honestly, I think I like Bumblebee a bit more. Yeah, hollow legs, that's for transformation, but the rest of the figure is very neat. Helps that I really like this Bumblebee design. The way they did the color breakup is better than on Sentinel, cause while Sentinel does have the enough orange, black, and blue to keep it from feeling plain, this dude has yellow, gray, and silver, and the little accents on the front of the car. But it's how it's placed in both its use of plastic and paint to make the color difference look more apparent and not messy, like it's intentional and it looks good. He also has an extremely stable base due to his large ass feet. Sentinel though is no slouch either. He doesn't have any trouble standing up. I'm also a huge fan of Sentinel's sort of like knight style 2009 Bionicle ankle guards. That's, I, I dig that. Both of them are also modern enough when it comes to their posing. Bumblebee's ankle tilts have they're not there at all. <laughs> it look like they're there, but they're completely immobile. That's more for transformation. Sentinel's pretty packed, but his knees are pretty high up, meaning his legs can be a tad awkward at times. But even still, their posing packs a punch. There's a lot of peas. Alrighty, the articulation of the goofballs is actually quite good, as you saw, but they are missing a couple of modern things, like something that you would expect on a standard Generations Deluxe now that they just don't have. So the head on Sentinel is on a ball joint, though you can't really get much tilt out of it, but it can spin. You got full 360 at the shoulders, they can go out that far, and then they can go out even further due to transformation. You have a bicep joint, you have a 90 degree bend at the elbow, no wrist swivel. You do have, a, well, the cannons are getting in the way. You do have a waist joint. Hips are on ball joints so they can go forward, back, in and out. They only go out that far, which is a little annoying. Thigh rotation, which is a tiny bit loose on mine. 90 degree bend at the knee, and then the ankles can pivot and they can fold down slightly. That's more for transformation. And the wings. I wanna talk about the wings real quick. 
I know a lot of people were slightly upset that they're not long enough because he's got like those Death Source style wings from the trailers. I put the guns right here and that kind of makes them a bit longer and that sort of makes the silhouette look nicer to me. It looks more like Death Source. So that's how I do it. Bumblebee has less posing, but somehow kind of ends up with a bit more range. It's really funny. So the head also want a ball joint. He can turn left and right, look up and down. A little bit more tilt. Kind of wish he had a smirk. Uh, the shoulders can do a full 360 degrees. They can go out that far. If you go any further, they just come right off. He does have, due to transformation, butterfly joints backwards, and they've sculpted it so that it doesn't have a gap. That's pretty neat. I feel like this was intentional, but that's 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 very cool. I like that. Ball jointed elbow, so he does have bicep rotation, and they can do this if you want. Um, he does have 90 degrees of bend at the elbow, nothing at the wrists. Hip, oh, hip. Waist can rotate. Hips can go forward and back, in and out. They're on ball joints, and they can go out further than Sentinel. You have thigh rotation. You have 90 degrees of bend at the knee, and there it looks like there's ankle tilts, but they're they they don't they're not there. The reason they're there is because when you fold the foot up for transformation, this has to rotate that way slightly. That's why they're there. But because he doesn't have ankle tilts, it doesn't mean that he's not like stable or poseable. Because when you get him into like a lower pose, you can move his foot forward and get him like really really low. Let me see if I can do it without him falling. There you go. See, like he's really stable and Sentinel can't really get that low because his knees are so high up. Like his knees are really high up versus Bumblebee's where they're just not, I unpacked that. But yeah, it, it he, he feels a little bit more poseable than Sentinel even if he doesn't have ankle tilts and Sentinel does. So as robots go, they're pretty much fantastic for me. Now their alt modes don't falter from that at all either. All right, let's get the most interesting one out of the way because then we'll do the most fun one afterwards. I know, the interesting one is interesting, but this one is, is really fun to do. So Sentinel, he's a slight, blah, 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 blah. he's a slight switch up on the traditional jet former. So these need to come off because they can also peg on his shoulders. The guns, the instructions tell you to peg it on the shoulders and that's where they need to stay for, for jet mode. So we're going to fold those up and around. We're going to take the backpack, unpeg it, flip out the little, little winglets and then just sort of bring the wings up and out of the way. Now the head is going to unclip and rotate inward. The arms, you're going to fold out the nose cone and you're going to bring them forward 90 degrees like that. Raise them up, rotate them 180, and then bring them together up like this. And the arms form the nose cone. That's really cool. I don't think we've seen that very often on jet formers. I like that. I think that's neat. And then this just comes back up and we'll sort of cover that. Now the legs, you want to fold open these black sections here, fold the feet in and they will just eat themselves and peg into the side of the jet. So you get that on both sides and the back black section will also peg together to hold it all into place. And then you bring the wings down and tab them in. And that is your Sentinel Prime jet mode. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Shield goes on the back. I like that, that that's really interesting. However, Bumblebee's very cool too. So we're just gonna remove all of his weapons. Now the weapons do peg together and that's how they're gonna store in vehicle mode. Now Bumblebee himself, you want to get the knees pegged in because they do peg in. You get the arms straightened out, fold up his feet and rotate them to the side like that. And then we are going to rotate the waist 180 degrees, bring this section out and back, bring this section up and then open up the back section. Now you rotate his head there's this little slot that's going to go on that. So that, that goes in there. It doesn't clip in, it just sort of sits. Then you fold that back up, bring this up and close that up. Now the arms, you want to rotate them 180 degrees, shift them inwards on those butterfly joints until they're fully in place. They will peg in at the shoulders up top here. Then you bring the arms together and they will peg together at the fists. And then you bring this section around and it will just sort of eat the arms and peg in to the side. So you get that in there and get this one in there and then they will peg together at the lower legs. And then you take this section here, you bring it up. I find the easiest way to do, to get this to sit, cause it is kind of annoying, is to bring it like this, fold it up and then bring it down. There we go. And then that will sit into place and then you fold that section up like that and then the guns can just store on the top there. And that's Bumblebee. I, I, I find this a lot more fun to do 
than Sentinel. Even though Sentinel is very interesting, I like this a little bit more. I love how both of these kind of spin the traditional transformations for both alt modes. Like how Bumblebee's legs suck in most of the car through the sides and Sentinel's arms become the nose cone. And of the two, I still like Bumblebee a bit more, mainly due to his rolling, because all four wheels are pinned, meaning he rolls like a treat. Sentinel though is a lot better at weapon storage, Bees just kind of sits on the top, but both of them feel pretty solid, nothing wants to come off or apart, and they look nice. Bee here though could use a little bit more color on the back, and Sentinel's black palm really does kind of get in the way of bit visually, but I highly recommend both of these. Seeing as the Studio Series ones don't release until like another year from now, these two are really good stand-ins at a slightly lower price and work a lot like those more collector-oriented figures, even if these are from the kids line. Like these are totally meant to be thrown at a wall and survive, and they are more simple than you would expect your average like Studio Series sort of teenage to adult collector type figure, but they still fill that gap for me because of how nice they are. But that's my look at Transformers 1 core slash mainline, I almost said Rise of the Beast, Bumblebee and Sentinel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.